Before modern technology existed, civilizations built incredible structures and sculptures that would live on in infamy. These structures marked crowning achievements for their time and were known across the world at a time where communication was scarce. While all but one have now fallen into past mystery, let's examine these engineering marvels as they once were. The Colossus of Rhodes this massive statue of the Greek god Helios was erected in Rhodes in 280 BC. It stood as a symbol of Rhodes' victory over Cyprus, placed at the entrance to Rhodes Harbor. Much like the Statue of Liberty that stands as a prolific symbol of American freedom, so too did the Colossus of Rhodes over 2,000 years ago. Built with a bright facade of bronze and standing 110 feet tall, it would have been one of the tallest vertical structures in ancient times. In terms in terms of the design of the structure, an architect named Chairs of Lindos developed the plan to construct this 110-foot sculpture. He would have developed many small sculptures of the structure to which the full-sized bronze panels were scaled off of. It's speculated that this brilliant ancient architect never lived to see the project completed. According to various accounts, the internal support of the structure was much like one would have expected given the construction techniques of the time. Several stone pillars were used as support ports and iron beams were connected from the stone base and pillars to the external bronze plates. The statue was built on the edge of the harbor, which would have meant that construction access was likely only viable from one side. It's speculated that a large earthen ramp was used to slowly place much of the framework for Colossus. Based on the height of the large figure, however, a ramp that stretched to the top of the structure simply would have been impossible. This leads to the belief that wooden scaffolding might have been used in the construction. The statue was ultimately destroyed in 226 BC. The Great Pyramid of Giza Of all the seven ancient wonders of the world, the Great Pyramid of Giza is both the oldest and the only one still surviving mostly intact today. Throughout the course of history, through the construction of every other wonder, none have come close to the engineering prowess demonstrated by the Egyptians who built the pyramids. The general consensus among modern scholars is that all of the rocks were quarried and dragged into place. If you'd like even more of an in-depth look into how the pyramids were engineered, you can watch our full-length video by clicking the link in the upper right corner. Part of what makes the materials used in the construction even more staggering is the fact that their source lies hundreds of miles away from the pyramid site. This means that the Egyptian engineers and labor force would have transported materials weighing up to 16 tons by sheer man and horsepower. Large limestone blocks were used to create the core of the structure, which is what can be seen of the pyramid today. The original pyramid would have been faced in casing stones to create a smooth, glossy exterior finish. Many modern studies have been conducted on the Great Pyramid, including one from a team of engineers and Egyptologists. Using a crucial path analysis model and assuming that no levers, pulleys, wheels, or iron tools were used in its construction, they estimated that it took 10 years to complete from start to finish. This is on the lower end of estimates, but throughout all these estimates, the timeline moves at a staggering pace. The Hanging Gardens of Babylon as their name would suggest, they're likely built in the ancient city of Babylon, which is now part of modern-day Iraq. When tracing the engineering feat of these gardens back to their time of existence, it becomes hard to find any concrete evidence of any specific aspect of their creation. The only aspect of these gardens that has survived over the years is that of myth, which has led many to think that they never existed. There are rumors that these expansive gardens were built by Nebuchadnezzar II for for his wife Amidas, which stand at the core of the myth of the gardens. For such a seemingly expansive structure of gardens, there has been no physical evidence found of the gardens today. Assuming that these gardens did exist, they were likely destroyed before the first century AD. Other theories around the seemingly non-existent gardens also trace back to the gardens of Nineveh, which may be where the myth of the gardens of Babylon began. The gardens would have consisted of a series of terraces that held an abundance of greenery. They were likely not hanging gardens per se, rather the plants likely overhung each terrace. Baked bricks and asphalt were believed to have been used for the base of the structure, which would have stretched nearly 100 feet in the air. It's believed that these gardens were ultimately destroyed in the first century AD. The Lighthouse of Alexandria 
The tallest lighthouse currently standing in America is only half the size of the lighthouse built in Alexandria. Built between 280 and 247 BC, it was a structure that was ultimately a first for the world, one that protected ships for up to 30 miles off the Egyptian coast. It's believed that the final structure was built from stone in three stacked sections. Also referred as the Pharos Lighthouse, rumors in regards to the magnitude of the lighthouse spread so quickly that artists who had never seen the structure began painting it. The completed lighthouse stood somewhere in the range of 394 to 449 feet tall for over a millennium. After Alexander the Great died, his successor, Ptolemy, took charge to develop the city that the legendary king desired. We know that the lighthouse cost the kingdom around 800 talents, which through rough conversion we can say is equivalent to $1 billion in modern money. Light on the top of the tower was produced through the burning of gas and other tinders while it was then reflected through a series of mirrors to direct ships. Built completely out of limestone, it would have been a stunning structure, marking Alexandria on the map. Unfortunately, after a series of wars, it was ultimately destroyed in 1480 AD. The Mausoleum of Halicarnassus You know you've made it in life when your tomb becomes one of the seven wonders of the world. The mausoleum at Halicarnassus was built between 353 and 350 BC to house the body of a prince of the Persian Empire and his wife. At a height of 148 feet, it was also one of the tallest structures in existence at the time. This wonder is actually where the term mausoleum comes from, as the prince that it was built for was named Mausolus, and thus was buried in this above-ground tomb. The structure was commissioned by Mausolus's sister, who also happened to be his wife. This was actually common practice for Persian rulers in that day. No expanse was to be spared on the building of the structure, so messengers were sent out to source the best artisans from across the known world. Nearly all of the world's most famous sculptors were brought in for the project, and each was supplied with a team of craftsmen to help them at their task. Since there were so many sculptors involved in the project, there were also subsequently very different design styles. The final structure was finished in the styles of Egyptian, Greek, and Lycian cultures. The structure itself was made mostly out of marble. This heavy stone was used to create a tapering substructure to the mausoleum that eventually was built up to a 140-foot height. On the lower half of the structure, there was a relief created through collaboration of sculptors depicting Greek mythology. Moving on from the Greek base, there were 36 intricately carved columns surrounding the building. These columns were quite necessary to hold the large and traditional marble roof. This roof was made to be pyramidal with 24 different levels. The final structure gives semblance to three separate structures stacked on top of one another. Ultimately, it's believed that it was destroyed between the 12th and 15th century AD. The Statue of Zeus at Olympia A statue of the Greek god Zeus built from ivory plates and gold panels stretching 43 feet tall isn't your typical construction project. While the sculpture is that of legend, very little is actually known about the artistic work beyond written texts. It was destroyed in the 5th century AD with no known replicas. The statue features a sculpture of Zeus sitting on a cedar throne, and the materials of the entire sculpture ranged anywhere from ebony to precious stone. Perhaps Perhaps the marvel of the statue of Zeus is not the structural magnitude, but rather the sheer amount of ornamentation embellished on the statue. It's no surprise that the statue was so elaborate due to the fact that it was proposed as the centerpiece to the stadium and temple at Olympia. A sculptor named Phidias was selected to complete the over 40 foot tall statue, which would take him 12 years. The statue was built inside the temple at Olympia where it spanned from floor to ceiling. Phidias made sure to make its dimensions close to the internal dimensions of the building so that the statue appeared larger than it actually was. To give some parallel to modern times, the Lincoln Memorial is likely similar to how the statue of Zeus would have looked, but Zeus would have been twice as big. Phidias used a wooden framework to place attachment points for ivory panels. He likely would have designed the structure in some form of grid pattern to allow for easier sculpting of the individual panels. Tools recovered from the site suggest that Phidias hand sculpted the entire higher statue. The Temple of Artemis at Ephesus 
Built to honor the Greek goddess Artemis, the temple at Ephesus was described as the most decadent and ornate of all of the seven ancient wonders. Built on a hilltop in present-day Turkey, its construction took place not only once, but three times over the course of its existence. Destroyed each time by war or flooding, it was finally lost in 401 AD. In its day, the temple would have been the pinnacle of society and its engineering would have been unmatched. Construction on the original temple began in about 800 BC, where it was then destroyed around 200 years later. Used to worship Greek gods and goddesses, the architecture was influenced by both Greek and Near Eastern styles. Supporting the building was 127 columns, each 60 feet high. Many speculate that these columns were rolled up to the location by teams of workers and animals. Then, a cantilever crane, or more likely earthen ramps, was used to lift them into place. The temple was shaped in a rectangular fashion, measuring 377 feet by 180 feet. The rectangular shape was the only aspect of the structure that wasn't extravagant. Each marble column featured beautifully engraved caps, and inside the temple there were many highly detailed sculptures of Amazon warriors. Gold and silver also adorned the details of the structure. It was a place built for extravagance and beauty over functionality. Most famously, Antipater of Sidon, the man who compiled the list of the seven ancient wonders, spoke of the temple as more marvelous than any of the other seven wonders. 